Good morning, students. So, in the past couple weeks, I've given you a lot of different videos on uh, writing our literary essays. And up until the end of last week, I had you working on the body paragraphs. The one thing that we haven't yet hit, though, is working on our counter argument. So, this lesson is going to be working on counter argument within the literary essays. We're going to go through a few different things, and I'm going to be switching back and forth, so you're going to see the screen change a little bit. Um, but we'll get this lesson in, and then you should be prepared to be able to submit a draft by the end of the week. That way, I can give you feedback throughout next week. Uh, if you want to submit stuff sooner than that, if you want to check in with me, I've had a number of people email me, and that's great. That way I can provide feedback as close to in the moment as possible as if we were in class. So, on with counter-argument within our literary essays. Now, for our structure, this would probably be your third body paragraph, but you can, if you are um, working slightly differently, you can weave it in to the end of each body paragraph if you have something that you would like to counter argue that way, but I'd like us to stick to having it be our third body paragraph. Now, here are a few different prompts that you can use trying to introduce the counterpoint to your argument in the third body paragraph. You don't have to use these, but here are a few starters that you can go back to and use to introduce your counterpoint. So you can have, the first one is, well, some might argue, and then the ellipsis there is a spot that you would put the counterpoint right here. Then you would follow it with, they forget that in the text it says, and then you would rebut or provide your proof that their counter argument is wrong. Same thing here. Some people might interpret this to mean, but clearly that's not true because whatever your reasoning is. Remember, I said this in class, but a counter argument, you're acknowledging that people could disagree with you because literary analysis is really your opinion, your interpretation of the text. So other people can disagree with you and they can still have a way to, in theory, think that they are right. Your job then is to acknowledge that their point is there, but you then want to still use this opportunity to not only prove the counterpoint wrong, but also prove that you're right. So you're still adding in text evidence to prove that you are right. Certainly it could be said that would be the introduction here to whatever the counterpoint is. This is saying, well, this is a good point. It fails to account for whatever your reasoning is. These are the ones that come directly from our text that we are using here, the Lucy Calkins writing units of study, but they're very, very specific. We want to make sure that we weave these kinds of things in. So I will give you an example of how you can do this with my own writing. So we're going to pull up that screen shortly. So I brought back up my uh, outline format from when I was pre-writing. This is where I shared the idea that some people might disagree that Buck overcomes his adversities and there are specific instances of when that was true. He never makes it back to his home, to the judge. He doesn't overcome the law of club and fang because he lets man rule him for a time and he doesn't overcome because others did the work for him, so some might say that that's not him overcoming. Now remember that these examples, I then had to find a way to disprove it. So the first one, while he doesn't make it back to his home, I am going to acknowledge that that is true, but that his old home isn't fit for him anymore because he has grown. So. I'm going to demonstrate that, and then you would follow into the next and the next in your third body paragraph. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Now one thing I'm going to do before I identify and explain the counter argument, 
I'm actually going to frame this paragraph again with a little more of a push for my particular point with my thesis. Because while I'm going to acknowledge this counterpoint, I want to make sure that no one forgets my position. So, this is also a way to transition from the other paragraphs to this one. The entirety of the call of the wild is full of examples in which buck overcomes the challenges he faces. Drawing most readers to conclude that overcoming adversity is the primary theme. Jack London had in mind for his readers. So I'm secretly still going to frame this around my theme. But I'm using this as a transition to provide an opportunity to bring in that some people disagree with this. So now this is where I add in the counterclaim. There are some readers, now I use a transitional word, however, who disagree with this theme. because they believe that Buck does not manage to overcome his adversities. That's that part. Now, the first reason was my first example, and then I'm going to prove it wrong. The first and perhaps most viable piece of evidence those readers would point out is that Buck never makes it back home to California.
this could be seen as him not overcoming the very first adversity he faces. But, so I'm acknowledging why they might think that, and now I'm going to explain why that's wrong. But, it's really just the inciting incident of the story. Making it back, and it shouldn't be capitalized, back to the judge's house would not be an example of Buck. overcoming the challenges he faces throughout the novel because it would ignore the growth that he makes due to every other challenge. So here, I acknowledge that there is something that they could argue, and then I explain why it's wrong. I can go into more detail but I'm explaining a little bit of why that's wrong. By the end of the novel, Buck is too great an animal he's lived too big a life to be stifled by the confines of the judge's place. He has grown to be king, I capitalize that on purpose, again, but over all the wild in the Yukon Territory. Heading back to the place he started would not be success, comma, or semicolon. It would be regression. So, Buck never makes it back home to California. So then I have to explain 
it's really just the inciting incident. And here's why that's wrong. And I would do that with all the different quotes. The letting man rule him. I'd go into the yeehats, how others sometimes help him overcome. Help is not a bad thing. That's where I will go in that third body paragraph. Everything that I mention, though, as a counterpoint, I really turn around and I use to my advantage. That's your job in the third body paragraph. You need help with that? Send me an email. Tell me what you're trying to do, and I will do my best to help you guys.